on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. Yet she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. It's my pleasure to greet you on this Easter Sunday morning as we celebrate the glorious resurrection of Jesus, his triumph over the grave, and by his death and resurrection makes a way for us to be with God forever in heaven. Today we've got green lights on in the sanctuary also as a reminder of those who have been lost this year to the virus, we remember that they are celebrating their first Easter in heaven, and God has kept his promises to them. Let's pray together. We welcome you, risen Christ, our one and only Lord. As we welcome you to the service, so we welcome you into our hearts. Rekindle the fire of faith, hope, and love in us 
through this Easter Sunday service. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join us where you are at home uh, in singing a medley of some of our favorite Easter songs. He lives, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and the chorus to Because He Lives.
beginning now in a time of intercessory prayer. Oh God, we come to you with outstretched arms. And Father, we recognize you as the one who loved us so much that you gave your only son for us. Father, we know you and recognize you as our promise keeper, as our healer, and as a miracle worker. Father, what a privilege it is to come to you in prayer together this morning. And we know that it is through the Holy Spirit that we can lift our needs to you. Father, there are those in our families, in our church community, our friends, many, Father, in our state and around the world that we don't even know their names. But, Father, because of our humanity and because of our love of you and our desire to love as you love, Father, we lift them up to you. Father, we pray confidently, knowing that you are in each need and each situation. Thank you, O oh God, for receiving our request. Father, we want and we need to feel your loving arms around us. We know that it's in you that we find our strength, our hope, our joy, and our celebrations. Father, we pray that you'll hear our hearts just now. And we promise that we will be listening for you in return. Father, we continue to pray as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is a reading from Matthew 27. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn from two, from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of their tombs, and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to see about his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I think this is a first, preaching on Easter Sunday morning to an empty church. There's something symbolic about that, I guess, an empty church for an empty tomb. We know our Lord is with us wherever we are, and so it's a great privilege to open the Word of God on this Easter Sunday morning. We say we're a church without walls. Right now we're a church without people inside the walls. I know you all are out there busy being the church wherever you are. I've decided to take this opportunity with an empty church to share an embarrassing secret. Now, Pat Rhodes will probably want to see my man card after I share this secret, but for a very brief time, I binge-watched Say Yes to the Dress. I know it's kind of embarrassing, but I really learned an awful lot watching that television show. I found myself cheering, yes, say yes, say yes, or booing, oh, run away, run away, don't buy that dress. It kind of made me wonder what would I do if a bride showed up at the altar in one of these avant-garde dresses that's basically a bikini with a veil. Saying yes is what got that bride in that overpriced shop to begin with. Someone proposed and she said yes long before she said yes to the dress. It made me think that the word yes is one of the most powerful words in the English language. It makes things happen. The word no is also a powerful word, but it stops things from happening. Yes starts things. Good Friday, just a few days ago, was Jesus saying yes. When he was in agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, yes, I will finish my father's business. He said, yes, and things happen. Lisa read that marvelous text. At the moment that Jesus died, the veil of the temple was torn into, starting at the top and ripped to the bottom. What a magnificent picture. Let's remind ourselves that this heavy curtain hung between the Holy of Holies and the rest of the temple complex. It was the concentrated presence of God in that room that was sealed off with a heavy drape. Once a year, and only once a year, the high priest, and only the high priest, could go on the other side of that curtain and present the needs of the people to God. When that veil, when that drape tore, it started at the top. It's as if God was taking that veil and saying, no more, no, and saying, yes. God says, yes, I want to be with my people. The Jews and, and many other religions had said no over and over. No to anyone with a skin blemish. No, you can't come to worship. No to anyone with a limp or any kind of physical deformity. No to anyone who had had dinner the night before with a Gentile. No to anyone born outside Judaism. No one of a foreign country. No one, no one. And you see the list goes on and on. When Jesus said yes to the cross, and when God finished the work of raising Jesus from the dead, it was as if God said yes to a brand new relationship. All of the possibilities came with it. Now we can say yes to living in a kingdom of peace and hope. Yes to a life of forgiveness Yes to reconciliation between us and God and reconciliation between each other. We can say yes to follow a vocation that God has called you to, regardless of your sex. It says yes to young men and young women and youth and children of every nation and every language. 
It says, yes, God is at work in the world and everyone, not just the high priest, everyone is welcome. This good news was hard for the disciples to understand at the first. I think we probably should cut them some slack. The women went to the tomb. Mark, the Gospel of Mark says, the women went away mystified. We're not sure what ending Mark intended to write to that story. The disciples didn't trust the reports of the women. Even Peter and John, two of Jesus' most intimate followers, they couldn't understand what had happened. Famous, doubting Thomas says, unless I put my finger in his hands or I put my hand in his side, I won't believe. Two men walking on the road to Emmaus walked with Jesus, not knowing who he was after his resurrection, telling him all the stories about the resurrection. And they didn't know who he was until he broke bread and sat at the dinner with them. The power of yes dawned slowly on the church. And to be honest, it hasn't been a smooth road in the 2,000 years since. Many times, to our own discredit, the Christian church throughout history has retreated and said no. Many times, Christians have pulled back and not allowed the resurrection of Jesus to draw us into the world. But when the church says yes, amazing things happen. A very recent example is how we are having to respond to the COVID-19 crisis. When Daryl and I were in seminary 40 years ago, uh, none of us dreamed or wanted to dream about having a ministry that was only through the magic of video and we didn't even know about digital video then everything was on tape we didn't want that but Daryl was had enough foresight he actually took a class in this stuff 40 years ago when Richard Spatz took a class was trained in how to do digital editing and how to add the words onto the screen he didn't have any idea what he was going to have to say yes to and here we are all these years later saying, yes, we don't have to be in this room physically in order to be the church. I suppose we could have said, no, we're just canceling church until the governor says it's okay to go back, whenever that's going to be. But because some of folks have stepped up and said, yes, we have found all new ways to communicate the gospel. You, church family, are continuing to say yes. Your financial generosity has continued unchecked, just as if we were meeting here every Sunday. We aren't together, but we're still together. And what we find during this COVID-19 crisis is that generosity and goodness and kindness are growing rather than diminishing. New leaders and new generations are rising and saying, yes, we will give leadership. Yes, we will step out. When Jesus said yes to the cross, he empowered us to say yes to God. Here's the Easter message that I want to leave with you. That this Easter, you will say yes to following God in new ways. That you will trust in God's goodness. That when God leads you into new paths of service, that you will say yes. That you will let the no stand for the days when really you don't need to be doing something. But when God calls you out of the tomb, that you say, yes, I will follow you. Just imagine what God can do when we say, yes, 
I will trust you. I will follow you. I will serve you. The other night, preparing for this message, I was scrolling through my phone listening for some music to play in the background, and I had forgotten that I had downloaded Keith Green's Best Hits album. Many of you will remember the name Keith Green uh, was a one of the early leaders in contemporary Christian music. And tragically, he and two of his children uh, were killed in a plane crash in California in 1982. He was only 28 years old. But he was head of a ministry called Last Days Ministries and was a prolific songwriter. One of the, I, I really don't know much about his catalog of music, but as I was listening to these words, I came across this song called Asleep in the Light. What he says is that the world who doesn't know Jesus, they're asleep in the dark where they're supposed to be. They don't even know they're in the dark. But the church is asleep in the light. Living in the, in the uh, shadow of the resurrection, we're living in the light of God, and yet we are not embracing all the potential that God has for us. In fact, there's a line in there that I may use when we all get to church. It says, Jesus rose from the grave and you can't even get out of bed. That's a pretty good line. Here's the Easter message. Wake up and see what God is wanting you to do. Ask him for how he wants to lead you in this Easter season. God bless you for saying yes to being a servant of the risen Christ. As we close our Easter service, uh, we'll sing this song chorus, He is Lord, as an affirmation of our faith in the risen Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. with me as we close this Easter Sunday worship. Loving God, Lord of the empty tomb, God and Father of us all, we ask for you to cover us over with your grace and strength until the day that we are united again in this world or the world to come. May we always be your people. In Christ's name we pray.